Hey guys, uh, welcome back to another episode of Mixed Bag Monday for the week of August 13th. Um, as you know, we are the only gaming channel on YouTube, um, so thanks for sticking with us. And once again, I'm here with Julian. Hey, what's going on? And that is true. Uh, as of today, August 13th, every other YouTube uh, gaming YouTube channel has decided to step down. Um, IGN, GameSpot... Uh, all, all the regular uh, sites you would go for uh, news um, are, are leaving the YouTube game, and they said, you know what, it's time for some young guns, some young bucks to take over, and uh, they chose us. So um, thank you to them, and thank you to you. Yeah, thank you very much. And thank um, you to you, Jacob. Oh, thank you to you as well. Yeah, you're welcome. So what, what, what are you doing this week? Uh, well, let's see. So... What are you uh, playing? What are you listening to? What are you watching? What are you reading? Well, it's a, it's going to be an exciting week, uh, mostly because um, I've well for me in particular, I started playing Prey again, uh, the Xbox One version. Uh, Prey okay. came out last year, like quarter three of twenty seventeen, um, maybe earlier than that. I definitely yeah, it just didn't... got a really cool uh, DLC update, didn't it? Yeah, it did from uh, which they showed off at E3, which is called Moon Crash. Um, I still haven't played that. I never got around to finishing Prey, but it's it's really like a, a gem, an underrated gem, I'd say from from last year. Okay. It's uh, as you know, it's published by Bethesda, um, not developed by any of their studios, uh, but you know, it has that seal that uh, that I I like. You know, I'm, yeah, uh, it definitely seems like it has a bit of that Bethesda charm. Yeah, for sure. Without the bugs, though, it seems like there's not that many bugs in this game. No, and and the beauty of Prey, and and I don't want to like build it up too much, but I will say that it's it's such a good experience that it's it's worth playing i think everyone who likes video games would find something of enjoyment from prey uh whether it's the story or just the core gameplay um there's just so many moments in it where i have to stop and like really think about what just happened in the game and and there's been many moments where i've just been like yes like this is what i want in a video game totally okay um uh, just as a background, Prey is like a first-person shooter, but it's deeper than that. It, it's actually kind of like a reboot of the original Prey game, which came out on Xbox 360 uh, near its launch, yeah. um, which I think it, it was kind of like a Doom clone in a lot it of ways. It was kind of well-received, if I'm remembering correctly. Like, a lot of people really enjoyed it. And if I feel like it's one of, if not the only games that feature, like, a Native American protagonist other than that's Assassin's true Creed three i believe that's true you're right cool. it is cool and you know that was a, it was a good game I, I think that it came out in a time where people were expecting something else um i don't know how well it did critically or commercially um it's 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 kind of like a uh, wolfenstein that you know when yeah. that came out on xbox one where um it kind of came out to not a lot of fanfare um, and then around the time that we realized that Wolfenstein 2 was going to be coming out, we saw this resurgence of people going, hey, you know what? Wolfenstein was actually a really good game. Mm -hmm. um, and then Wolfenstein 2 was great, too. And, and Prey is kind of like that. And, and I will say, though, that this reboot of Prey is very, very different uh, than the first. It is still a first-person shooter. Um, it seems like it has been a lot more modernized. It, yeah, that's that's true. Um, and it's drawn more influence from games like uh, like Bioshock. Um, yeah. And narratively, it's similar to Bioshock, uh, existing in this like kind of semi open world. Uh, it also draws um, inspiration, I think, from Dead Space. Uh, yeah, but I can it, see that. But it takes the best things of those games and then kind of morphs it into its own original ideas and concepts. Um, so if that is something that interests you, I I really think you should check out prey uh, and you could probably get it for pretty cheap these days maybe twenty dollars or less um yeah and then, for sure and then the moon crash dlc i think is an, an additional twenty dollars i'm sure maybe though there's even a bundle that's like 40 bucks or something from what i remember when moon crash came out it was pretty recently too actually uh yeah. a lot of places like said wow this is you know a really good dlc with a lot of uh replayability because it has that whole roguelike type of uh implementation where the i think one part of the dlc like every time you go play it it's different every time 
Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, it's a really cool concept. It does take that rogue like concept and and put it on top of the uh, prey engine. I mean, you're essentially um, trying to make it through this uh, space station. Um, and each time you die, you start over with a new character. But I think yeah. like changes that you've made uh, during each playthrough and certain things carry over, um, which is another thing that we see in roguelike games. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't played it yet. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I definitely will finish the game, uh, the story of the game first, and then move on to that later. Um, so that's probably what I'll be playing this week uh, alongside of Hearthstone. The um, new expansion came out uh, Tuesday of last week, and mm -hmm. it, when I've had time to play games this past week, it's pretty much been Hearthstone, and then, I, like I said, I did play Prey a bit, but um, I've been playing a ton of the new Hearthstone expansion. It's it's pretty good. I, I enjoy uh, the decks that are out right now. It, it, the meta of the game is kind of forming, and... and We'll really know what it's going to be like for the next couple months in in that game, um, probably within the next couple weeks or so. So, awesome. um, yeah, like uh, I'd say by the end of August, we'll know like exactly where things stand. That's how it always is with uh, when a new expansion comes out. For sure. Um, that sounds sick. Yeah. Uh, so what are you working on? What are you playing this week, my friend? Uh, a lot of stuff. Um, I'm just finishing up the end of Cosmic Star Heroine right here on Switch, um, which we will be having a review up either by late tonight or early tomorrow, so keep an eye out for that. Um, first impressions right now, I've got to say I really enjoy the game. It obviously wears its uh, Chrono Trigger uh, influence on its sleeve very proudly. Um, so yeah, just keep an eye out for that when it comes out. Um, what else have I been playing? Not much, really. Um, just going back and forth, you know, I had to capture some Skyrim footage for a video I did yesterday where uh, <clears throat> where you should go check it out, too. Uh, Bethesda takes a surprising stance against Sony um, and their, you know, walled-off ecosystem. And that kind of, like, triggered something in me where that's <laughs> I've just been wanting to play that uh, for the past little while. Yeah, I mean, that's how I am, too, like... I'll, it's, well, I, last time I was playing Skyrim is when it came out on Switch, uh, yeah. and I played it for a month or so, and then I never got around to, to finishing a playthrough I was working on, but there'll be something in the future relatively soon that will trigger me to play it again, and I've gone back and, and played through that game many a time, and it's, it's reliable in that uh, if there is any time I want to go back and play it, I know that I'll find some enjoyment in it. Um, yeah. Especially on Switch. I, I really, really liked playing it on Switch. It ran great. Uh, ran just as well as the remastered versions on Xbox and PS4. Mm -hmm. um, not Obviously not near as good as it might run on PC, and the draw distance isn't that great, but runs fine for me. Yeah. Um, I've been watching, uh, rewatching My Hero Academia. Um, I, <laughs> I don't really enjoy the dubs uh which is what i've been watching so i can like kind of play games or do other things at the same time yeah and you were saying is, that yeah the dub is just pretty mediocre to me at least um you know it's not it's definitely not the best do you um, do when you watch anime do you normally watch uh the subbed version right yeah uh, uh, for sure yeah i mean that's kind of like my dilemma is that i often will watch the dubbed over the subbed because i like as you just mentioned probably distract myself with other things if i have anime yeah. on and i don't watch a ton of anime anyway um i've actually been watching uh or re-watching the uh yu yu haka show series which i the yu yu hockey show yeah exactly the yu yu hockey show that's uh that was like the first anime i ever saw um it was the thing that got me into anime and manga uh i remember stumbling across it on Toonami, like, in the early two, 2000s, um, you know, because I think that was on in the late 80s, early 90s in Japan, uh, and it came over with Toonami, as they did, you know, bring a lot of anime over. Um, so I have very, like, nostalgic and fond memories of the dubbed version of that, because uh, okay. it's actually pretty good. Um, yeah, like, there's a few anime that I will always say the dub is better just because you know maybe it's nostalgia you know i'm not entirely sure but like 
one of them is Dragon Ball Z. Oh yeah, um, classic. I, I don't think I would ever be able to watch that without uh, without the dubs. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> the the dubs are classic for Dragon Ball Z. It's like iconic. Yeah. Best example of of doing an anime with the you know the proper dub. Yeah, um, and they pretty much I think had the same voice actor since like the '90s, which is great. Oh, for sure. Um, okay, and probably the last thing we should bring up uh, on this episode of Mixed Bag is uh the smash direct which was this past week um, yeah i don't think we've actually talked about that have no we? we haven't we haven't uh i mean we've talked about it offline but not recorded us talking about it um so uh walking away from it um yeah it was a pretty long direct uh, i think it was like a half hour right yeah um, I, w- I was surprised yeah i was surprised that they had enough content or had had enough to reveal that would lead yeah, it to being 30 minutes exactly. long but they certainly did and they announced a ton of stuff and it just goes to show that like this game is going to be massive, massive. it's going to be yeah. there's so much content in it I, I i couldn't believe that they have 900 songs in here uh, in yeah, this game over 300 different stages no it's like not that. 300 it's a well oh, oh yeah it is because they have it like it's 100 stages but then each stage has three different parts right yeah oh yeah so it is, it is 300 and i didn't think about that um that's crazy because you have like the alpha and omega different versions of yeah it. Um, and then just like the normal so technically, version yeah so like technically any stage can be uh an esports stage you know with no hazards and no uh nothing like that to get in your way which is definitely cool yeah um and there's been a lot of rumors actually just because of like the direct where sakurai was speaking a lot of people say, oh, the chairs behind him mean that, like, he's hinting about Waluigi because... Oh, they're the, purple and yellow. Yeah, in a tweet before this direct came out, he said, I apologize if my eyes look red, you know, I'm really tired. And a lot of people are now saying, oh, that's a reference to King uh, K. Rule because his eyes are red. Um, you know, so then I've seen a lot of different uh, different speculations, a lot of different theories that say oh, yeah, the chairs behind him are Waluigi. But then a lot of people are like, no, the chairs are definitely referencing Skull Kid from Majora's Mask because uh, the two Navi that he had were purple and yellow. And then on the couch next to Sakurai, the pattern on some of the cushions look like Skull Kid's colors and stuff. So, you know, a lot of of theories, you know, they might be a little out there. But uh, it's definitely interesting to see people theorize, you know, and talk about what their wishes are. Yeah, totally. And the, I was also thinking this week of like what characters I, I think would fit well within the Smash, you know, genre and it fit yeah. well into this fighting game. And, you know, I think it's like pretty good where they're at now. Like I, I wouldn't I'm not like pining for them to add anyone. You know, no, me neither. Uh, I think it's pretty good. I, I think new fighters are welcome, sure, and I, I'm they're clearly going to add more uh, after the game's release as DLC. I don't know why yeah. they wouldn't. Um, but yeah, it's just like already such a massive roster that how much fan service can you elicit out of it? You know, I mean, if I had it my way, I would definitely want uh, um, the characters from the Xenoblade Chronicles two in there. You know, Rex and Pyra and stuff like that. Um, and then I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't say no to having uh, Isaac from um, Golden Sun in the game because, you know, that was one of my favorite games on the Game Boy Advance. So it'd uh-huh. be definitely cool to see that instead of an assist trophy. Oh, for sure. I, I, okay, here, here's my my ask for them to, to add. Um, the uh, one of the like, or maybe like a combination of characters from Advance Wars. Yeah, that would be definitely That'd really be tight. cool. That'd I mean, be super tight. They had an assist trophy of something they, from Advance Wars. Oh, right. Is that in one of the older games? That's right. That's right. Um, and you know, I actually went back and because uh, I've been thinking about Smash since the direct, and I was like, man, I haven't, I haven't even played Smash in a couple of years. Um, and I went and I found my 3DS copy of Smash, mm-hmm. and uh, I started playing it and. You know, I realized that that playing it on the 3DS is not that great of an no. experience. Um, I I was so stoked. Well, to when... be honest, playing almost anything on the 3DS isn't, in my opinion, nowadays isn't that great of an experience. Yeah, um, you might get some flack for that, but uh, I mean, there's you know, there's stuff so that belongs on the screen. Right, you know? right. There's stuff that absolutely belongs on the 3DS for sure. Uh, but 
I, I will say that my time with the 3DS has declined to almost nothing. Um, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, honestly, no... I don't remember the last time I even turned it on. Yeah, uh, it's only been on for me in the past few years uh, for Pokemon. I mean, that's okay. really it's pretty much the Pokemon console or I mean, the Pokemon system for me. Uh, I don't really use it for anything else. Although I will say that WarioWare Gold is looking pretty good. That does look really good, but I, I can't lie. I like. I really just think that that would be better off on the Switch. I know. I, they've the, Nintendo has kind of backed himself into this corner of like the Switch is what they need to develop on, and releasing shit for 3DS is like, well, you know, this would be better on Switch, right? And then there's also Luigi's Mansion, which is getting a remake on the Switch. It's like just put that on the or uh it's getting a remake on the 3ds it's like dude just put that on the fucking switch like yeah yeah i feel you i mean i i i maybe i'm, I'm just too entitled <laughs> but the switch is just so good you know and and that's like it's kind of like a um this like psychological response to it being so good is that now it's like put everything on switch all the time it's almost like a meme at this point yeah I'm sure a lot of people get kind of annoyed of hearing that. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? It's just the reality of the situation. So. Yeah, I mean, sorry Nintendo, but <laughs> you heard it here first. We're, you know, we're the biggest video game channel on YouTube right now, so you definitely should listen to us. If we keep saying it, it will be true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Speak it out into the world, and then hopefully one day. All right, guys, thanks for uh, listening to this week's Mixed Bag Mondays. We'll be back, of course, next Monday with another episode, and stay tuned for more content this week.